James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is February 8th, 2023, 5.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, NASA and NOAA are saying that no coronal mass ejection was formed by any of the solar eruptions yesterday. That is correct. That's exactly what they're saying. Although we can see the plasma explode in a halo situation here. And we can see that it's coming from the north, right there where Sunspot AR-3213 is. Again, they're saying that no coronal mass ejections were created by any of the inflares yesterday or today. And we've had several. Let's continue. I'd also like to add that some of our viewers believe that this is a planet. And if it is a planet, although it's moving at the same pace as the stars are moving, it would be a big problem because there's no planet supposed to be right here. Again, I believe it to be a star because it's moving at the exact same pace as the star pattern is moving. Today has been a super crazy day, especially as far as solar flares are concerned. We seem to be getting stronger and stronger solar flares that seem to be earth directed. We will take a look at those. In the meantime, let's take a look at these 4KP index models, starting down here at the college model. It says that we've had a geomagnetic storm for six hours and six hours of geomagnetic disturbance. Move up here to the Boulder model. It says we've had nine hours of geomagnetic disturbance, KP4. Now, when we jump over to the new model that NOAA is now using, it actually indicates that we've had six hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. On this model, that's a KP of 3.67 or higher, as you can see here, six hours of disturbance. All right, looking at GOES X-ray flux, we can see that we've been hit by four M flares, and well, at least one of them was an M-shaped M flare that made it extra long as far as how long it was in M territory. We've had M, let's see here, 2.04, an M, 1.62, an M, 1.54, another M, 1.71, followed by an M, 1.75. Now we can say that we've been hit by four M flares today, or five, depending on how you look at it, as far as that last M flare. I want you all to see how that baseline seems to be moving higher and higher. Unbelievable. If we were to ever get an M baseline, it would for sure be the first time I'd ever seen one. All right, over to Lasco C3, starting yesterday at 2118. Looks like the time has been added back. can see that explosion in the south that they've actually tried to make look black, but it's not. It's plasma, as you well know. I'll look for quick missing time here or any abnormalities. You can see that planet coming from the left over there, which is really from the other side because this is flipped over. And no significant missing data. What I will show you guys is there's that hiccup there, which I don't think is a hiccup, and there's a halo explosion most all of the day. Plasma going in all directions, period. Over to Ghost Solar Ultraviolet Imager, 195 angstroms. You can see that it looks like we just had a big flare, and we did, and it's coming right from where all the flares have been coming from, right there, 3213. That's over the last hour, and you can also see coming around the limb, there's some action right there. It's like it's actually taking a bite out of crime. Look at that. 
We've got a huge sunspot, according to NASA, one of the biggest ones ever coming around the limb if it stays together. And that's what y'all are starting to see here on the limb. Over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center, taking a look at the x-rays hitting every living thing on the planet. We had a big flare right there, definitely an M flare right over South America. That's a dead hit. And let's see what else happened. Remember, we're at a C++ baseline, so everyone's getting some heavy radiation today. Another M flare in the Pacific here. Almost a dead hit on Hawaii. Another M flare here. That was the double peaked M flare that we just saw. And that's going to die off into nothing. So we actually see how much radiation in the form of X ray radiation is hitting the planet. These are extremely unhealthy levels. All right, these sunspots are getting much more complex. 3213 is extremely complex. Uh, going around the limb here, these seem to be breaking up. I can't even really read what these were. They're so close together. We can see 3210. 3209 is basically gone. 3213 has gotten more complex and grown in size, as well as 3214. We saw them both explode at the same time yesterday. And now we have 32, 15, and 16 that have just been named, and we'll have several more coming around the limb that need to be named by tomorrow. Real-time solar winds on Discover. We start off the day here at 12 or 13. Space weather threshold is 10. We stay in space weather. All of a sudden, we're knocked down to 0.28. Makes zero sense whatsoever. Look at the temperature drop and the wind spike up right when that plasma drops and then we see the plasma spike back up to 11 or 12 12 and a half and then it drops right back down to 0.17 none of this makes any sense whatsoever so we started at 12 we've been under one and then we just have some gibberish the solar winds on the other hand well they started the day at 500 kilometers per second, which is unheard of because we have not had a coral hole earth facing in about five or six days. And they've gone up to over, well, right at 600 kilometers per second. Unbelievable. And I told y'all there's usually a reverse situation as far as the plasma and the solar winds, a reverse relationship. We have heavy plasma, it pushes the solar winds down. We have heavy solar winds, it pushes the plasma down. That is basically what we're seeing here. So these winds are extremely fast, and we did break the 600 barrier right there, 601. So from 500 to 600, and ending the day back, after being right there at 600 again, ending the day back, at around 550, 500 to 635, back to 550, or maybe 500. Plasma starts out at 12, goes to 0.1, finishes the day out all the way up here in space weather threshold alert again, over 10 centimeters cubed. You can see that when we do have a crossover like here, We've got a lot of plasma movement, a lot of wind movement, and the temperatures are confirming everything we see. We see another cross over here. It's much harder to uh, explain as far as the plasma. We do have some variation in wind, uh, but it just doesn't, well, I guess that is 592 to, if I'll be able to grab that, well, we'll just say 500. And this actually drops down to, which is very strange, 467, and the plasma follows it down, if you'll notice here. This is not a, well, inverse relationship like it should be. The plasma followed the solar winds, and the temperature also dropped. The crossover happened before that, and it's a little bit harder to determine what caused that crossover. It definitely looks like we have a second source of energy within our solar system here. So let's see 
how they did over at the Space Weather Prediction Center. All right, today is the 8th, so they redid this today. They have plasma constant down here at about 2 centimeters cubed all day long. Started at 12, went below 1, and finished the day right about 12 again. Solar winds started the day at 500. They haven't started the day at about 500. We'll say 550. And finishing the day at about 500, which is close to what happened. They don't show the bulge or the, well, jump to 635 kilometers per second. It's more of a downward slope like you'd expect to see from solar winds and plasma. It's the first time I've ever seen this on Discover, period, as far as these, these extreme movements from high to low and then back to high and then back to low. So we'll give them an F on the plasma here and we'll give them a C plus on the solar winds. Although, again, no coral holes have been earth facing in five or six days. So I don't know how they got anywhere close to that. All right, over to STO, and the 8th started right now. Let's see if it, they turned it off again. Lots of activity from 3213, and also its comrade here. Look at that activity from these two sunspots. And then we can also see a lot coming around. Look, that was the big one. A lot coming around the limb here that's going to be named quickly. Jump over to 171 angstroms here. It will be the 8th in just a few moments. Look how active these sunspots are. Unbelievable constant activity. And coming around the limb there is supposedly one of the biggest sunspots to ever come along. We're on the 8th here. We're seeing constant activity out of 32, 13, and 32, 14. And the sunspots coming around especially the southern part of our star. The orange is a composite of the major or the largest sunspot that no one remembers coming around to be Earth-facing. They usually break up before they actually crest the limb here. We'll have to see what happens. This is from at least two days ago, so it very well could be broken up, but we also see all the activity on SDO. This, ladies and gentlemen, was taken at 3 p.m. today. Look at these sunspots coming around. We have a lot more named sunspots, and the ones that are Earth-facing are extremely complex here. 3213, 3214. I believe these have also been named, but it looks like we're going to have three or four more new sunspots to be named by morning. And these are going to be very active. So, 284 angstroms. This was taken at 7.06 this morning, Central Time here in the U.S. You can see all the activity here and here coming around the limb. And then 32.13, 32.14. Uh, this is another name sunspot. This is 32.15. This is 32.16. Just FYI. They do look very magnetically complex. This is... Actually, NASA's is with spiral, and they actually show a CME hitting Earth. It's a very light CME. Earth is the yellow dot here, but you can see it come out quickly and hit planet Earth here with plasma. These CMEs, watch them, they increase in intensity as they get further away from the source, which is something I've never seen and really can't comprehend mathematically unless there's a second source of energy or something lighten them up all right let's see how the europeans did they really did terrible on the plasma they have it again just where noah did uh, from about three to four centimeters cubed all day long we had solar winds start out at 500 go up to 635 and end up back at 500. So I would say they did a pretty poor job on solar winds as well here for today, the 8th. 